Welcome to our EMIC service tonight. We are so glad you've logged on to our prayer seminar with Pastor Terry Pearsons. Get ready to come up to a higher level in the Spirit as we press deeper into Him. <laughs> that wasn't 100%. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, why don't everybody just stand? Let's just take this time to give glory to God. Thank Him for all He's done for us. Thank Him for this meeting. Thank Him for the word that's gone forth so that we learn how to better tap into the things of God, to not just tap into them, but to live in them, to walk in them. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for those who are watching on BVOV Internet that they'll be blessed, that the same anointing that's in here will reach out through the way, airwaves, the computer waves, reach them, touch them in their homes, give them the revelation, the insight, the knowledge, the wisdom that they need, Father God. All oh, will be careful to give you the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, we're going to start off the service with one of my favorite songs, Because He Lives because Jesus lives I can face tomorrow doesn't matter what tomorrow brings I can handle it how about you why can you handle it because he lives hallelujah we're gonna have one of our, our singers to start us off with that go ahead and sing it for us dear. God sent his son
heavy. It's getting better and better. It's getting sweeter and sweeter as we go higher and higher. Hallelujah. Well, you all not tired out there. This is the third night. I was thinking about Pastor Terry having him come out tomorrow night. Keep it going. <laughs> come on. Let's put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. How about that? Come on, Nathan's going to help us sing this. We got a key? Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice. sing one more if it'd be all right with y'all it's all right with you yeah that, that's a good idea why don't you all come in here as close to these two areas as you can we got to come together we're coming together spiritually we need to come together physically too. get get as close as you can if you don't mind just scooch in and scooch up think scooch in scooch up <laughs>
Everybody put your hands together. What a fellowship. What a fellowship. What a Leaning on. you fall. They'll just take you up. <laughs> They'll lead you on. They'll brighten the path from day to day. <laughs> oh, I'm leaning, church. How about you? I'm leaning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Glory to Him. Oh, let's lean on Him tonight. We'll lean on Him. Now, that's, that means now you have to let your faith drop from your head down into your heart and get hold of that. That we're leaning on Him. We're looking to Him. We're listening for Him. We're watching for Him. And with all of our hearts, in order to please Him, we're going to follow by faith. We're going to follow Him in what He wants us to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. How many prayer leaders do I have with us here tonight? Prayer leaders, raise your hands up big. Everybody else be seated. My prayer leaders, if you stay standing for a moment. Let's see, I want to be able to see you where you are. And Praise the Lord. I thank God for you. You should be thankful for them. Amen. All right. If uh, we could have a number of you come on up here. Just if you, if you would like to come up. Come. I want you to come. We're going to pray about a couple of things tonight. And I think it would just be good. We'll just come up here and be in agreement together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah, just come right up here. If you're one of the prayer leaders, come on up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to see you all. Praise the Lord. This is good. This is good. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Andy. I'm going to talk for just a minute here. Um, we have a couple of things to pray about. First thing I want us to pray about, this came through from C-SPAN's. Krista, did you send this to me today? Uh, many of you know about Rachel T. Fatiller. You've probably heard me mention her. So many of you. Well, Rachel, Rachel's in her 80s. And she, oh my goodness, I tell you, hearing her pray is, oh, I don't even know what to say, what it's like to hear her pray. I've heard a few people pray with the level of, you know, the Bible talks about being skillful in the word of righteousness. I, that woman is skillful in the word of righteousness where it comes to prayer. And she knows how to just get a hold of things and, and use them in, in prayer. And uh, so over the years, Sister Brim and several others have learned to really pay attention to what Rachel says because she knows her way around the kingdom. Just to give you a couple of examples, this was back about, this would have been probably, well, it was at, shortly before, four, I don't know, six years ago probably. And this was back during the uh, previous administration. And... Um, before anything came out in the news about the, uh, the situation with the intern. So I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, this before any of that came out, and one of the, the ladies called Rachel and said, how are you doing? She, you can tell when Rachel's in the spirit, her voice, everything about her changes. And they said, what are, what are you praying about, Rachel? And she said, I'm in the Oval Office. And I'm under the desk and I'm cleaning out the trash. <laughs> well, now how many, <laughs> what did I tell you about the Lord opening realms to you? And so she, you know, she didn't know what it was, but she knew and she was in there by the Spirit of God. And as far as all she knew and the Spirit of the Lord was just leading her, but she was under the desk in the Oval Office pulling out the trash. And it was almost no time after that, that that whole Oval Office incident hit the news. And it came out. And so there are a lot of things like that. See, that, that, that's the kind of thing I'm telling you about. If you read the scripture, you'll see there's tons of that. You see a lot of it, particularly in the Old Testament, but you could pass right by it, especially if you don't look for it. Lots of examples of things that the Lord did and demonstrations and ways that he used the spirit that were many times symbolic. Because, you know, uh, praying in the spirit is praying in code. Tongues is in code, but there are other things that are in code. The devil doesn't know. And it's in the spirit. And it's just as good as if you knew and if uh, anybody else knew. But you don't have to know because we're following him. So she didn't know. All she knew was that she could see herself under the desk in the Oval Office with a trash can pulling out the trash. And so she did. Now, before the Oklahoma City bombing and also before 9-11, Rachel, uh, in talking to some of the other prayer leaders, Rachel had a tremendous burden in prayer. And she said to Sister Hammond and Sister Brim, she said, I cannot get this by myself. She said, it's the heaviest burden. And it was during that time that those two particular nationwide affecting things occurred. Before Brother Robert's song, I say about June of this last summer, early July, Rachel uh, began to have a prayer burden. And in that, uh, she kept praying out Oral Robert's name. She prayed Oral. And she, in, in her prayers, Oral kept coming up. What was this at that time that Brother Roberts had the visitation from the Lord. Well, this came through on C-SPAN today from, uh, not C-SPAN, C-FAITH. Um, today, it says, today, this is for today, Rachel Tifa Teller, a seasoned prayer and dear friend of Sister Hammond's, called and shared that for the past two days, she's had a heavy burden to pray. She shared that it is not something she can push through herself, and she's asking for our spiritual supply. Sometimes it is... In prayer, it is difficult to explain or pinpoint the burden in which the Holy Ghost places in you. The burden of Rachel's prayer is similar to the one she had prior to Oklahoma City in 
We are not saying that this burden is the same nature as these t past two occurrences, but we make mention of it in hopes of helping you understand the intensity of the current burden that Rachel is praying out. Whether the Holy Spirit lays this same burden on you or not, please lift this matter to the Father in prayer. And I found that one thing that's really interesting, and that just is, especially with the prayer leaders here, I'll say this to you, but then I'll also say it to you, respectively. Sometimes one of the greatest places in prayer that you can take on is praying for people of prayer, is to pray for their praying. In a prayer group in particular, sometimes the best thing to do is to, to spiritually you direct your faith and, and the, the prayers that you're praying to be a support to the one or two or three or however many that the Lord have taken the lead in that particular prayer situation. And it can be of great assistance. Have many of you ever been to Branson? Have many of you ever been to Branson to see Sister Brim's meeting there? Well, you see that happen a lot there. And so I say that to you because as prayer leaders, sometimes the best things you can do is to help people who are sort of up the chain, so to speak. Uh, and then I say that to you because here are some of your prayer leaders right here and praying for them. And being sensitive to that in your prayer time, it can make a big difference because something you couldn't pray by yourself, but as you assist them by the Spirit, and they are assisting whoever the Lord's got on their heart, it, it causes a great strength and power to come together. We don't have to be together and catch hands for us to be in agreement. Praise the Lord. So we're going to pray about this, and then I have one other thing. So let's just, I know it's warm in here, but hopefully it'll cool down soon. The air is on. L little little uh, glitch in the temperature setting today, but we'll get it fixed. It's, it's blowing, so um, just use your faith to rise above. We're not moved by the flesh tonight, right? We're moved by the Spirit. Praise the Lord. And you know, your flesh will tell you all sorts of things. It'll want you to get up and get a drink of water. It'll tell, but sometimes the best training you can have is to tell your flesh, never mind. You don't get what you want. We're going to be led by the Holy Spirit and just put your flesh under. Praise the Lord. So let's stand here for a few minutes and let's just take hold of this then with uh, Rachel. Hallelujah. And um, let's hold on the music just a minute, Tony. Let me, let me just see if we find our place in this. And then at once we're praying, if you want to seem that you should jump in, we'll please do. Let's begin to pray in the Spirit. And it's like this to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we hold this before you. Lord God, we know that you know all things and that you are well aware of things that are impending. These things, Lord, are, are most usually connected with end-time events. And that, Lord, we, we know you, you understand and know all these things that come, are coming to pass, things that must come to pass, things that cannot be changed or turned. But there are things that can be. And no matter what it is, Lord, there are things that can be affected by the prayers of the saints and the faith, Lord, of the believer. And so in Jesus' name, we've had this call to prayer. And Lord, we hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in this call because we honor the, uh, the spiritual authorities that you have placed over our lives. And so in Jesus' name, we lift Sister Rachel to you and the, the call to prayer and assignment that you have placed in her in this hour. And in Jesus' name, by faith, we, we add our faith to hers. We add our faith, Father, to lay hold of the will and purpose of God that's involved for each and every person affected by it. In the name of Jesus, Eleme ke vozon zivarasu zon de liberato shengle gmadzon zisibata ezon bajole me ego maje ambazen zibarano ze sendiba la kofone mi astoka eni ni jaso zizale me hefone bache embarando sensible givasto kamara nenisa sonze eyes abrona mala embronda ste kebrasta kala lima sim 
Oramada sombre, Angresh da Kamala Kumbo sondi banatana. Embazin don de ste as o sible vorana songe melesto. And Lord, abras kimele bo macha. Ebrana no zenzin bene e como shole maha. Erana no manzandi besta. Engresto combo dre silila maha vo bazimbe. Ebran jon da se kilimatson drashtakal. We pray, Lord, readiness, abrashto kai. Readiness, abrashta. Readiness, abrajon badaza sin blavata. Inglege vashon de vasitani. Engelema adzo sataro moshta ki masa. Readiness, alobombo zendiba no alamashe ki barasanda. Son de le pere ki son de re maza son ba 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 sen giba la copa oh se la maha yetana na masi oh ke le ma shandong basa oh salama roshta kain oh so brosto le mashta alert a throshta kamachta sta alert a brosta kamashta ke alert to our our president a brosta kanachi alert him a sombra sta alert our nation a brosta the alert of Brosta Kalamastoka, alert of Brosta King. O Shale Medizos and Bera Najata, Engle Gavasho Bobos and Dibelaco say, Arana no Shambereni so Medisonge, O Pelemashandara Mozasi, Lord Engle Gavasto Camarasota, Peace now, Arabarosta Kimrasto Camblevrastotan. O zaparanasho ke mene satai ya ezopono zeti engle gervasho na mazai yotona mashadai eyes open alo broshtata open now esingi basta open ezom broshte eyes open egrino sole benda evrana naje evrana sto kela matsonde evonos zambrosta klema dai it's an eva so teti avran. Oh, jele maracos ilevarana ha mazandati. Oh, zandaja kama sandom zandidata. Elemandandos in the rena na hale pato. Yes, ekele, race again a mashto. A race a la mashta. A race a komosa tivrasto. A race a mashta. A race a bronde diza sombrosta king. Onze le barasto kenesi. Aidze si balasho o o o mandeja. Father, we pray for Rachel in the name of Jesus. We pray for strength in her inner man. Strength in her spirit. Strength in her soul. And strength in her body in the name of Jesus. Supernatural strength, Father. Feed her with the manna from heaven. Feed her with the manna from heaven. Ajandala marotsta kije. Ando zele la majata ramasun dobrashta. Oh zanda da jindile barado. Oh, ege mashana basanda vana na na sondraja ta. Pashikili baza si barato komo jete beli aso se a help now. Help now, as a long basta. Help now, a goroch the clima rados and di. Azo tarash takai. In the silly rash to kibra sandavashti. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we praise you. Now, Lord, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, that that's a help. We thank you, Father, that the Spirit of the Lord is at work, that angels are at work. Glory to God. The sustaining power of Almighty God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
And if the Lord should put that on your heart at any time, you just keep lifting it up. You just keep it in the spirit. We don't speculate or guess. But we do know that things are coming. Hallelujah. We have the word of the Lord. We have the word of the scripture and the witness of the spirit. And we have the evidence before our very eyes. So we know things are coming. Now, uh, to be forewarned is to be forprepared. Uh, and th there are things that come up sometimes. And it does well to pay attention. Some of my biggest regrets, spiritually speaking, are when there were things that were going on. Things that, that were cues. You know what a cue is? I don't mean like a pool cue, but like a drama cue. You know, that, you know what your, your cue is. That's your cue. And, and there are cues in the spirit. And so often we miss those cues. And they can be critical. They can make the difference in life and death if you miss them. I, I remember Alyssa Stemple who worked for Rick Renner. And uh, she was carrying a great sum of money. It's not safe to mail it. And she was carrying a great sum of money from, the, from Russia into another one of the, the former Soviet bloc nations to the orphanage. Well, she carried that money on her person and it was discovered. Well, it was, there was a lot, the laws changed there rapidly and they're known for changing laws and not notifying anyone. They don't publish the laws they make, but you're still accountable for them. It, it, it's, it's the communist way. And so she was... Um, um, Took, taken immediately to jail. And it was a very, of course, serious situation there. And she could have implicated uh, Rick Renner Ministries. It, it was very, 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 very serious. But she handled herself wonderfully, and, and a lot of things happened, and there was this miraculous favor of God that she was released. And, but she not for a couple of days, I think. So it was a very dark time for her. But when she called her father to let her know that she was out and how things went, she said, he said to her, Alyssa, is God, was God faithful? And she said, I knew exactly what he meant by that. Not was it just was he faithful to get her out, but had he tried to warn her? And she said, you know, I had to say, in hindsight, yes, he had. In hindsight, she knew. In hindsight, there were things that the Lord had said and done, but she just glazed right by them. Too busy, to, to, to making too light. Jesus said, don't despise the things of the Spirit. What does that mean to despise them? Hate them? Well, it might, but it can also mean just to make little of. So many times we make little of the Holy Spirit with this and say, oh, that's just me. Well, it's you, but it's Him in you. We put more value then. So, uh, like I said, there have been some things I've had great, great regret over in the past where I took note of some, something in the news would stand out to me in an unusual way. Uh, there was, there was um, some things about a helicopter, and I, I even had told Gina Jennings, I said, boy, there's something about a crash. There, there was a, a report of some sort of crash. I don't remember now. I said, boy, and it's disturbing me. But I didn't really know how to take it to prayer and didn't follow it through. I just took note that it disturbed me. And it was not very long after that, there was a helicopter that crashed out here on our property, and, and two people were killed. And so I regret missing those cues, but the Lord's faithful. Now, you remember I had little Dasa come up here Wednesday night. And we prayed over her because her finger got caught in the door at McDonald's and cut her finger off, which I haven't heard a report back from her on that. I'd like to. Well, that night, Wednesday night, I got home. And about 1130 that night, I got another phone call. Is Abraham in here tonight? Is my chance is he here? Is Abe here? He's out witnessing tonight. Okay. Well, he gave me a call about 1130 and... and um, Long story short, he said, Pastor Terry, we're on the way to the hospital. My stepdad got his finger caught in something they were working on on the car, and it has cut his finger off. And so it's in, within 24 hours. And so, of course, we prayed, and, and the word I got back from him is that all went well, but I don't have details on that either. But it's good to pay attention to things like that. Now, we've been talking about praying in the Spirit and being led by the Spirit and not praying by the flesh. Well, here's a really good opportunity to pray by the flesh. Would Some people think, well, they may take notice that, oh, we better pray about that. But the praying is motivated by what the devil's doing instead of being led by what the Spirit says. And now the devil would love to motivate you in prayer in fear. He would love for you to pray from fear instead of faith because in all your praying, you're energizing him. 
And he would also, remember he's a terrorist. He's the terrorist. He invented terrorism. And so he would like to do that by something here, something there. And everybody, oh, oh my goodness. Uh, there's a dark thing happening. Uh, there's an assignment of the devil here. There's spirits working. We got to pray. We got, to... no, 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 no. You start looking at it like that, then you have completely separated yourself from the grace of God, number one. And number two, you are seated with Him in heavenly places, and we're looking down on that thing, and we're just going to take care of it, see? We say, whoa, wait a minute, I'm not ignorant of His devices. And so we put a stop to anything that He may have a strategy for in the future. Say, well, yeah, Pastor Terry, but what if tomorrow you get a report and it's, it's as big or, or and bad or, or more w w worse than anything we've had before? That doesn't change. That does not change our stand. It doesn't change how we pray other than, Lord, we're open to hear anything. If we missed it in any way, you show us. But nonetheless, we always, you know, a lot of people want to pray from the bottom up, but you need to pray from the top down. You know, there are times when, of course, we come to the Lord, but then there are things in prayer that we're not coming to Him about. He's already said, my grace is sufficient for you. You handle it. Particularly when it comes to the devil. And so from, in that case, we're not praying from the bottom up. We're praying from our seat of, of um, being seated with Him in heavenly places, and we pray from the top down with the authority that we've already been given. So we're going to pray over that. And uh, just let the Lord help us here for a moment. Pray over this because we're to stand in our ground. And the Bible says that we should watch and pray over one another. We should take care of one another. Pray for the brethren. So we're going to take our stand over that, okay? Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we are not abandoned. That we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. And that, Lord, we have been separated by the blood of Jesus, by the Word of God, and given authority in the name of Jesus where all of the devil's works are concerned. Jesus came to undo the strategies of the devil and to undo the works of the devil. And so in Jesus' name, whatever strategy, whatever works the devil has initiated, we undo it now in Jesus' name. Give the faith command and I say it stops now in the name of Jesus. Over our children, over our families, we thank you, Father, for the blood of our covenant. So we lay hold of that blood, that blood that separates us, sanctifies us, protects us, cleanses us from all the works of unrighteousness. And in the name of Jesus, we stand in all that that covenant provides. And I give the faith command for all the works of the devil to come undone now. You come undone now. <clears throat> we thank God for the life of God. The life of God. Hallelujah. Angels, we charge you in Jesus' name to watch and mount guard over all of those that belong to EMIC. Lord, those that don't have ears, cause them to hear in Jesus' name. Give them ears. <coughs> Help us, Lord, to hear and to see and to know. In the name of Jesus. Sombranda shelebara doze gligavaroshtakai. We dwell in the secret place of the Most High. We abide under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power no foe can withstand. The shield of faith, hallelujah. The sword of the Spirit. The breastplate of righteousness. The helmet of our salvation. Our loins girt with the truth. And our feet shod with the gospel. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, bless the name of the Lord. Now, Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Praise. Hallelujah. Praise. Hallelujah. Praise. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Lord, 
the devil loses again and again and again. Thank you, Lord. Praise him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks, guys, a lot. I appreciate you. Um, I, there's probably some up here. Thank you. Thank you. I walked off without my Bible tonight. I don't, I don't know how I did that. It was right by my notebook, and I just picked up one and left the other. But my trusty and faithful and wonderful husband <laughs> went home and got it for me. I appreciate that. Well, let's see. How many of this is your very first time tonight? First time that you've been with us here in this meeting? Can you see your hand first time to the meeting? Praise the Lord. We welcome you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do we have any first timers here to EMIC? You've never been to EMIC before? First time EMIC? Oh, good. Get us old, old home week then. But wait, well, not too many of you have, have missed, and that's good because I don't want to spend much time re, um, rehearsing and revamping the things that we have covered. But we'll just say a couple of things, and then we'll start uh, right into our message tonight. I want you to use your faith tonight. Are you using your faith? What do I mean by that? Well, you know, faith, faith, you use through your faith, you release your faith as a determination. You determine, I'm going to use my faith. Jesus said, have the faith of God. Well, if he said you should have it, then you can have it. You know, it's not just maybe you will, maybe you want, and... You know, how do you get it? But they, the, the things of the Spirit, which is what we've really been talking about this, this week, the things of the Spirit are very, very precise. Now, you know, a few hundred years ago, people didn't know that there were things of the, uh, of the natural realm that could be harnessed the way we have learned to harness them. And we know that there's so much more. There's so much more out there to learn and to know. We have, we have not even yet begun to really uh, uncover and discover and lay hold of the things that the earth has within it. The, the power that's just in the natural elements of the earth. The more we learn and the more we uncover, the more we master of the earth. But by the, the sheer fact that there's so much that we cannot yet master shows us that there is still a lot to be uncovered. I believe that there is nothing in the earth, no, no challenge, no trouble, no, no sickness, no disease, no storm, no, no problem or challenge, no natural problem or challenge, that there's not an answer for it in the earth. God, God is just, he just equips it all. But it was, it was um, polluted. It was hidden. The earth re quit giving up its gifts to man at the fall. It, when, the, when, when the Lord told Adam, he said, look what you have done. And the thorns and so forth, he began to describe to him what life was going to be like. Well, he wasn't just talking about tilling the garden, but talking about the whole of life. That you're going to have to work to get the natural world to respond to you. It will not yield to you naturally. But it does yield spiritually. You can see this so perfectly in Israel. It's an amazing thing. You go into areas where uh, before, 19, before 1900 in particular, uh, but even in recent times where the Jews, where they had not settled. And there were people living there, not a lot of people, but there were people living there. And it was just, well, Mark Twain dis described it as the, one of the earth's greatest wastelands. And the area was stripped and bare and you couldn't grow anything there. It was just, it was awful. And even to this day, you can go into areas where the Jews have not settled, where it's still wide open spaces, so to speak. And most of it's not very pretty, not very attractive, not very productive. But wherever they go, the earth responds to them, it yields to them. And all of a sudden, it's productive. Areas that before that were nothing but just dry, deserty kind of wasteland now is, uh, is acres and acres and acres, miles and miles of farmland, vineyards and, and 
all sorts of orchards and crops and cattle and gorgeous, gorgeous, just green and beautiful. Why? Because it responds to them. They're the spiritual owners of that land. And so there are things in the, in the earth that will respond to people of the spirit. And what we've been talking about is, in part, we've been talking about how that spiritual realm is the um, is, is more is sovereign over the natural realm. That God gave, uh, gave authority to man. And he, he held parameters inside that authority. Otherwise, man would have completely destroyed the earth. Would have completely destroyed himself. Satan would have accommodated that. But he couldn't. Why? Because in God's sovereignty, he set parameters that man, man's authority he does not go beyond. And so in his, the authority that God has given man, there's authority in all the different realms of life. We've talked about political realms, military realms, social realms, financial realms, um, all, all kinds of uh, cultural realms, music, all sorts of things that there are realms for and that those things are, it's natural. They're natural things and natural people rule in those and you can learn about those things naturally. You can go to school. You should go to school. You need to go to school. How many of you would like to have brain surgery operated by somebody that's just only prayed a lot? <laughs> no, school is good. Learning is good. Uh, you owe it to God to go to school and to learn. He provided, it's, 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 it's the only God, really. It's only the people of God that originally learned to value education the way they did in its proper place. But we know that in God's sovereignty, he also, it's, I see it like this. It's like, let's just say and pretend that this is a realm. And we'll look at it and, they, and they're, they're really round because, uh, in, in conceptually, because um, there's... There's, um, they're, they're full. You know, the things of God are, they don't, they're not linear. You know, they don't start and end. They're, they're full. God is everywhere in every direction all the time. He filleth all in all. So anyway, just picture like this. Let's say it's the financial realm. And the natural people that go into this realm, they qualify to get into it because they go to school and they learn and they get experience. And maybe they were taught some things from their parents and they lived around it and so forth. And they can come up and up and up and up in that realm. But then there's also another opening to that realm from the top. And that top then is where the Lord says, for those that qualify... And if he so chooses, he gives them authority or insight into that realm through the door of the Spirit. The people who have both spiritual insight and natural training, wow, wow, how powerful that can be. So we've been talking about these spiritual realms and that prayer is, has much to do with the operation in that realm. And I mentioned to you the first night about a prayer group that was happening, and it was a, a very high level prayer group. And these people have been praying together for many years, and have been praying for many years over the revival and over political things, both things, among other things as well. But those are the kind of things that they prayed about. Well, at about four years ago, they had a prayer meeting. And during this prayer meeting, one of the, the prayer leaders was caught up in the spirit and had a vision. And as she had this vision, she began to speak out what she was seeing and what the Lord was saying. So there was all sorts of operations of the spirit happening in that moment. One of the first things she said was, you have entered into the political realm. So the Lord had given them a place in the spirit, in the political realm, and they began to do some work in the spirit and things began to change. Now it took some time, but things began to change. And sure enough, we see that much of that change coming out now and it's manifesting. So understanding some things about prayer equip us 
Now, does this mean that you're just going to say, well, I think I'm just going to pray and the Lord will give me a place in such and such. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. The only reason that I can, that I'm telling you about these things is so that you can recognize it and understand that anytime you're praying, if you'll pray prayers that are led by the Holy Spirit, you can affect things, even things that you don't even realize. But if you'll pray being led by him, he, you can affect different kingdoms and realms. You can affect them. Your prayers can affect them. You give him license to move in that realm because he gave you license to pray about it. But even if he gives you license to pray about it, if you don't follow him in your praying, he still can't move. Does that make sense? Did you follow that? What is this? This is a cooperation. Prayer is a cooperation with God. That's the way God designed this thing from the very beginning. If you look in Genesis, you find out that, that God uh, created man and then he planted the garden. I always thought that there was a garden. The Bible says he put man in the garden. But then when you go and look where he created him, he put man, he planted the garden. He's working with Adam. He's teaching him. He's showing him. Then what happened? Then Adam named and called on the character, the personality for the animals. God created them by category. But then Adam started calling them. And in those categories, he defined them. Did you ever notice that? That God didn't say, let there be a dog. Let there be a cat. You know, let there be pets. You know, no. There were creatures. There were bird creatures and fish creatures and beast creatures but Adam is the one that named them he helped he by by the leading of of the Lord he gave them their names now see we we name our pets spot and rover whatever but that's not what Adam was doing he was naming them scientifically now what we do scientifically we name them because we see that's what they are Adam named them and that's what they became That was a job he had, don't you think? So there was this spiritual working together. This working together between God and man. That was his plan. And he just wanted to start with the earth. I think that's why the rest of it's out there not finished. Because there was work to be done. And so our praying now is a work. A companionship. A, a, a um, working together with the Holy Spirit in the realm of the Spirit. And the things that we are talking about, they're just, oh, we can't even scratch the surface about the things that he's, that are in the Spirit to learn and to know. You know, I said something to um, one of the ladies or maybe several of them, I don't remember. But anyway, talking about, you know, sometimes it seems kind of, my mind starts kind of uh, challenging me when we talk about things like this. And I think, oh, people just think this is really way out there sort of stuff. Or, or oh, this is so deep. Or and it's not deep. And it's not way out there. It's just unfamiliar. People just don't talk about it. You know? But, but that doesn't mean that it's unreal. That doesn't mean that we're trying to stretch something or make up some sort of doctrine. But, you know, the Bible, the Bible is, is hidden the Bible says that things are mysteries in God. They're not hidden from you. They're hidden for you. But we have to have our eyes open to see them. But the mysteries of God are always a blessing to us. Now the thing that... Let's open our Bibles now to Romans chapter 8. And we'll dig in a little bit tonight. Romans 8 verse 1. Now we've been, one of the other things that we've talked about and I want to reiterate to you tonight is that um, prayer, I believe that prayer is the absolute, it, it, it's the most perfect, it, it's a greenhouse for spiritual development. You can develop in anything and everything that there is in God in prayer. And really that's where you should get it. I remember Sister Hammond telling me one time, this was my goodness, probably, oh, 12, 
years ago, 13 years ago, maybe more. But um, we were in the chapel uh, there over in that building, and there had been a staff chapel. I think she had spoken. Anyway, I was spending a, a good amount of time in prayer at the time, but I had left the ministry as television producer and was just more or less in a waiting mode about what the Lord wanted me to do where, where ministry was concerned, personal ministry, you know, pulpit ministry for me. Anyway, Sister Hammond, boy, the anointing came on her, and she... She backed me up against the wall. She started talking to me, and she just walked up to me and kept walking until I was up against the wall. And she looked at me most sternly and said, Terry, let your preaching come out of your praying. Well, I thought to myself, well, I thought I did. I mean, I always pray before I prepare. I'll spend an hour or two praying in tongues before I prepare to preach. And so I thought to myself, well, I think I do that, but I, I'm smart enough to know that if there was that kind of boldness come on her to tell me that, then there must be something more to that than what I'm seeing. So I just sort of put that on the shelf and just let the Lord, you know, try to get that through to me what he meant. Well, over the course of the next year, uh, we started spending more time in prayer. We had staff prayer, and the next thing we, you knew, we, you know, we were pastoring, and we started prayer school. And in prayer school, uh, I started to teach on prayer, and that was a real challenge to me. I had to have the Lord really help me in teaching on prayer because there were a lot of things that I had caught, but I had not been taught, and so chapter and verse. And, and as I began to study the Word and listen to Sister Hammond, I started to see more and more Scripture talk about prayer or be able to relate to prayer that I, I didn't know you could. Well, anyway, we taught on prayer there for about, probably about six months. And then one day I was wanting to prepare for my lesson and there was nothing coming. Now, I, I've, I mean, I've been preaching now, I guess it's almost 30 years now. At that point, it would have been about almost 20 in some form or another been preaching. And so I know a little bit about preparing and hearing the Lord. And when there's nothing, there's nothing. And when there's nothing, you know what? There's nothing. And you can't make up something. And it, oh, the pressure. You should imagine the pressure that would come on me uh, to have to stand up in front of a group of people and not have anything to say. And I've been so dependent on the Lord showing me week by week. So this was the pressure. Oh, the pressure is just, it's so, now anybody that's ever had to preach knows what I'm talking about that kind of pressure when you just think I, I don't know it's when the pressure standing in front of people but it was standing up there with nothing to say I felt so obligated you know if you're going to get up in front of people you feel obligated that you should have something and so I was under such pressure with that but what we had learned and been practicing for the the year or two before that as we prayed in our prayer groups is we would we would practice the art of prayer we would come and start to pray in the Spirit and with every word be looking on our, in our inner man for the leading of the Holy Spirit, literally drawing out every word by faith. Now, when you were filled with the Spirit and, and somebody most likely laid hands on you or prayed with you, then you had to, by faith, draw those words out. And somebody said, now just begin to speak in tongues and you're thinking, but I don't know how. How do I do that? And your head's saying, we don't know that language. We don't know how to do that. How, how do you do that? How do you learn that? Until it finally clicks to you that it's not something your head knows and by faith you find it on the inside. Well, once you've prayed that way for just a little while, you just automatically know how to go right on the inside and pull that out. Well, that's the way, that's the way you're supposed to preach. That's the way you're supposed to live. Jesus said, I don't say anything except what I hear the Father say. So everything he was drawing right out of there. In fact, Jeremy, he was about 10 years old or so one night at the table. And just in a quiet moment, he looked up and he said, I know how he does it. Said, well, how, how who does what, Jeremy? I know how Paul Paul does it. Does what, son? I know how Paul Paul preaches. He doesn't really know what he's going to say, but he just gets one word and he speaks it out and it's hooked to the next one. And the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and he just says them all till they're all gone. <laughs> amen, amen. That's exactly right. That's exactly how it happens. 
But uh, that was that was sort of a new revelation to me in, in prayer. Been praying that and learned to follow him. But then when the, when Lynn said, "Let your preaching come out of your praying," I remember the first day I walked up to the podium with no sermon. No notes. I tried hard to make notes, but I was just shaking on the inside and out because I thought it was me. I thought it was me that had failed to hear, failed to find what the Lord wanted. I had fallen short and I felt so captive, so, so um, in bondage to that. And when I got up there and opened my mouth, out it came. The, just the flow of the Spirit just came. And that's the way He wanted me. What happened now? How did that, how did my preaching come out of my praying? There were things in my praying that enlightened me for my preaching. It wasn't just the praying about the preaching, still do that, but learning to preach that way or preach the way I pray totally changed my preaching. It doesn't really, even though I have notes and I have an outline sometimes, uh, then, and of course I have to study. You can't just not study. You're supposed to study. And so I did and you prepare. But even with an outline, if I just come and just, and there are times that it's line on line, I, I realize that. But even when it's like that, you still, you learn to draw the words from somewhere else. If you will let your living come out of your praying, that will happen to you in what you do. I, I've had that come up on the inside of me, learning how to take out laundry stains. I've had things happen that by the natural, I just couldn't get it done. And the answer come to the top. Um, I had um, praying over some things and I was able to set some time aside this a year or so ago able to set some time aside to pray specifically about finances and the Lord led me to to pray now we you know we tithe and we sow and we endeavor to give and we speak the word over that we pray over that and so forth but this was time set aside to do nothing but pray in the spirit and I determined Lord I'm going to hear I'm going to hear from you and I'm going to stick with this till we get an answer from you on what we, I should do uh, and it wasn't, it wasn't like a, there was a particular need or anything. As a, I just praying over the, our financial realm. Well, it took a while. And I, I tell you, the Lord helped me, but it took a while. And it was over a period of several days that I had several hours a day that I just spent doing that. Praying in the Spirit with that purpose. And it was His leading. Well, He gave me the leading about an investment. To make an investment. And it was, uh, I'll tell you what it was, it was American Airlines. And they weren't doing so good, but I was, I really, it came, it sort of came, and it didn't come as a thought, necessarily. It came up, you can sense, you, you get sensitive enough that you can feel it. Now, I don't mean physically feel it, maybe sense is a better word. You can sense where it's coming from. Sense came up from the inside, and then it enlightened my mind. But it came from here, American Airlines. So I called the fellow. We've, we had a few investments already. Had, in fact, I had invested some things, and I had done what he said. And I was losing money. And that was probably the reason I was so motivated to pray. I didn't like where it was going. We, we had lost a fairly a nice big chunk out of what we'd invested. And of course, it's not lost till you, till you sell it. And then I had a little bit of money come to us that I thought, I'm a, Lord, I'm going to do with this what you tell me to. And so with what we had invested and with what I had, I called him and I said, I want to make this investment. I'd like to do this. And he said, I, I, I can't recommend that. That is on our do not recommend stock list. We just don't know where it's going. However, we do have these two other options. And we are recommending these to really go. And so for me, I'm thinking, okay, now, Lord, I said, now, I'm learning. I'm learning about this. I'm learning. I'm, you have to develop in different areas of your spirit. There's some things I'm familiar with, and I probably won't question. But this was an unfamiliar territory for me. And a little bit, I don't want to say risky, because I, I 
wasn't going to put enough money into it that it would you know, be a, a risk if we lost it all. Because I'm learning. I'm learning. So you have some wisdom. So I listened to the guy and I began to doubt myself. But a lot of times when you're doubting yourself, you're really doubting the Lord. Because the greater one's in you. Now, it's, it's a good thing to step back and check and say, now, just double checking that. But anyway, I said, okay, I'll tell you what let's do. And I forget what it was now. I gave, I said, I, well, we'll let you put, we'll put a little of this in the two that you say. And then put the rest of it over in American Airlines. And it, it was, boy, it, was, it looked like they were going belly up. I mean, their big old picture of an airline on the front of the newspaper the next day. You know, it was looking bad, bankruptcy, all sorts of things happening. You remember, it looked pretty bad. This was probably a year and a half ago, I guess. Anyway, so we did that. Well, you know what? And I, and I forgot about it. I'm not going to follow it in the papers. I don't, I don't even know how to do all that. I'm getting this, the leading by the Holy Spirit. And the thing that I, the worst thing I can do right now is then move it over into the flesh. So, but I had to work at it. Oh, I had to work at it. You know, the, your mind starts talking to you, and the world starts talking to you, and the radio's talking to you, and the stock report is talking to you, and, and the, the questions and the uncertainties and the doubts and the fears and the devils are all talking to you. But I just put all of that aside, and I would just pray. Every time I had an opportunity, I'd say, Lord, I lift that up, and I'm just believing that if you told me to buy, you'll tell me when to sell. Well, I started watching the... the Every now and then, ever so often, I would call and get a report. And interestingly enough, the American Airlines stock went up and up and up. But guess what happened to their number one recommended stocks? Down and down and down. And I finally called and said, you know what? I think we need to take what you recommended to me and put it over in American Airlines. Even though it had already gone way up. Well, they wanted to talk me out of that, too, because, you know, it's already high. And we don't know where it's at. Just put it over there. Thank you very much. And so we did. Hallelujah. And just stayed with that until the, such a time that the, uh, I sensed that I was directed to go ahead and sell that. And you know what? We made a nice little profit out of that. Praise the Lord. We say, well, Pastor Terry, why didn't you just go do that? Again, well, you know, you have to be led, number one. Uh, and I'm just like you. I have other things going on. And, and um, it takes time to do things like that. But whatever time you give it, the Lord will honor you. And you have to, especially where financial, where financial things are concerned and um, promotion. Those two things, you have to be particularly careful. The, the, remember, there are laws. Remember here in Romans 8. Verse 1, there's no condemnation to those who walk not after the flesh, but after the dictates of the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit, which is in Christ, has made me free from the law of sin and death. There are laws in that realm. Spiritual realm, every realm, the natural realm, are all governed by laws, and you cannot change the law. You cannot change the law. And th those laws, and I, when I say laws, I don't mean rules. We're not talking about like Ten Commandment laws. I'll tell you about those. But the laws of how things work. The Ten Commandments, the laws and such laws as that, are given so that you understand how to operate in that kingdom. You cannot operate in the Spirit and have hate in your heart. You cannot operate in the spirit and call, uh, speak wrongly of the Lord. And that doesn't mean just saying God damned something. That's bad because God's not the damner. But you can't talk wrongly of God in any way. You can't talk about him putting sickness on you or that he's your trouble or he's your problem. You can't speak wrongly of the Lord and operate in that kingdom. It, the door is shut to you. It's shut. You can't, you can't do that. And it's for your protection. And it also keeps the, the things of God always remain holy. They remain pure. Who, who will ascend unto that throne? Those that have clean hands and a pure heart. That's how you get there. And you don't get there otherwise. Praise the Lord. 
And uh, so these things of the spirit, you can't go walking in with the flesh. Now, we don't want to hate the flesh in the sense that we, you know, you hate. There are people that say, oh, I hate my body. No, 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 no. This is a precious thing that God has given you. And people that hate their bodies will struggle with it. People who hate their bodies have eating disorders. They, ha they have weight problems. They have health problems. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to get somebody healed that hates their body. If you're looking in the mirror and you fuss about your body all the time, you are setting yourself up for trouble. And it's a, it's a, a little spark that'll start a fire that you, it'll be hard to find the root of it later on. But when things start coming up in your life and you try to get healing for your body, you'll find that a house divided against itself won't stand. So you have to love the body that God gave you, and that means you have to take care of it. And if you're not taking care of it, then you're not loving it. And so if that means that you need to change some things in your life, then you better get on it. Because this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So when it talks about the flesh and the mind of the flesh, it means that this body is not yet glorified, and it is still inclined to the ways of the world. It's got the world on it. It's affected by the world. You know, just go out in the world all day and come home and take a sniff. You'll find out it smells like the world. It doesn't take very long. It'll look like it, sound like it, and, it, it, and it, um, it, it'll begin to take on the very nature of all the things that are in the world. If it's just left to go that way, it just does. It just will go that way. And so the mind of the flesh, that inclination to just go the way of the world, that's what we can't allow to control us. We can't allow it to dictate us, to us things in the spirit. So how do, we, how do we know the difference then? Let's read just a couple of verses and feed our faith on this. Let's look at, uh, keep reading here. Verse 3. For God has done what the law could not do, its power being weakened by the flesh. See, the, the, the law of God was weakened because the flesh. It, it couldn't be perfected in their lives because the flesh couldn't live by the law. The entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit. Sending his own son in the guise of sinful flesh as an offering for sin. He deprived it of its power. He overcame it, deprived it of its power over all who accept that sacrifice. So that the righteous and just requirement of the law might be met in us. Who live and move not in the ways of the flesh but in the ways of the spirit. Now what does that mean? Everything that the law demands. It was impossible to keep it because the flesh couldn't. But he has made a way. Jesus has made the way. So that the flesh is not, does not have to be in control. If you keep reading over in this 8th uh, chapter of Romans. You find out in verse 12. We are not debtors to the flesh. We're not obligated to that carnal nature. Before Jesus came, you couldn't change it. You couldn't, you, you had to do whatever it told you to do. You know, just by the help of the Spirit of God from the outside, but there was no help from the inside. But because you have been born again, you have a new nature on the inside that is given, it's a spiritual nature, so it, it reigns over the natural if it's given place. It, it reigns over the things of the flesh. You know, I've used that scripture about not being a debtor to the flesh to be healed. I've used that scripture to get out from under pressure. Pressure's l the lust of the flesh. You know, you can get out, you can use that scripture to be delivered from overeating and obesity. You can tell your flesh, you know what, I'm not obligated to you. I'm not obligated to what you say. I'm not obligated to what you want. I'm not obligated to feel what you want me to feel. I'm not obligated to move on what I feel and what you feel. I'm not obligated to think your thoughts. I'm not obligated to your reasoning. I'm not obligated to you. I'm not obligated to go the course of sickness and disease. I am not obligated for my body to respond to the natural course of sickness and disease. I'm not obligated. It doesn't matter what would be working in my body. I'm not obligated for it to, to run its natural course. I'm not obligated to it. I am obligated to a higher realm, a higher force. 
a higher authority. And if I will walk after that authority, if I will live after the laws of that authority, which is in the spirit, then my body will come in line. Sometimes it comes in line immediately. Sometimes it wants to put up a fight. And a lot of that depends on how strong you are in the spirit in that area. Praise the Lord. Did you get that? Okay. Now verse 5. Those who are according to the flesh are controlled by its unholy desires. They set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit are controlled by the desires of the Spirit. They set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Spirit. Let me talk to you for just a moment about this word gratify. Well, there are a lot of things. They're, they're initially, the things that we know gratify the Spirit are the things that are in line with the Word of God. The, um, Jesus said that in John 16, he said, The Spirit will not speak His own message, but He will tell you what I say. John 14, he says, He will recall to your mind the things that I've told you. Scripture tells us that we must worship God in spirit and in truth. You won't find one without the other. It's impossible for it to be ordained of God and it to be one without the other. There are a lot of people that take scripture, but it's apart from the spirit. The Bible says the letter of the law kills, but the spirit gives life. So when you hear a message that doesn't bring life, then the spirit's not in it. Now what I, I did not say is that if you hear a message that corrects you and is uncomfortable to you, I see people duck and run from a message because it's uncomfortable and they don't want to hear it. They just want to hear the message, as the Bible calls it, because they have itching ears. Oh, tell me how I'm going to prosper. Tell me about the good things. Tell me about all the things. And people will just flock to hear that message. But when you get down to the part, that tells you, and this is what you need to do, and, and you know you've got to walk by love and, and start to learn the laws of the spiritual kingdom, well, they don't stay around. When you start to present the word and the sense of responsibility comes on people, they don't like it, many of them. You're not that way, are you? No. This, t this group's not. Is, are you that way? <laughs> Hallelujah. But then this also means, this word gratify. There is this, the gratifying of the, the flesh, is, I mean of the spirit. Jesus said, and we're not looking at all these scriptures up, it's in John, because of, just for time's sake. But Jesus said, when he started to tell the disciples, if you will read John 13, 14, 15, and 16, over in this John 17, you will see the ministry of the Holy Spirit with the believer. And in, throughout that, he started to tell them, he said, Now, the Spirit, the world will not know Him, but you will recognize Him. One of the most important things you can do is to give honor to the Holy Spirit. There's so many things that you can do that honor Him. Remember the verse that tells us, don't grieve, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve him. Don't put him back. Don't, don't put him in a position to withdraw. So when he says to do the things that gratify the Spirit, there is a sense on the inside, as you, especially as you pray in the Spirit, you begin to develop an awareness of him. An awareness that He's there. That's one of the reasons that the Lord gave us praying in tongues. Is so that we can develop in that awareness of Him. And be in communion. Now you can just pray in tongues out of your head and you won't go very far. But if you will always pray in the Spirit the same way you did the first time you prayed in the Spirit. And that is by faith drawing for every word. Not because your head knows it. Not because you've learned a flow 
but to look for every word. Not only what that word is, but how it is to be said and how it is to be delivered. Whether it's just you walking through the house, praying in the spirit, driving in the car, or in a prayer group. But you can sense when things, when you're, when you're following him. You sense that this is right. There's a sense of knowing him. And when you step out, you get out of step with what he wants you to do, to say, or to pray. You have a sense of it. There's, it's like a, a catch right down in here, a little, a little catch, a little, little skip, a little hold. Pay attention to that. Be alert to that. He said those that are after the Spirit, they're watching for that gratification. Not your gratification. Not your satisfaction. Your satisfaction should be in whether or not He is satisfied. Not looking to gratify you. We're looking to gratify Him. And so learning to recognize him, praying, asking the Lord to help you to see him and to know him. And you're just watching down on the inside as you pray. And that, that sense of, that's him, that's him. Hallelujah. Let's keep reading. Now the mind of the flesh is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit and it is death. Death that comprises all the miseries that arise from sin, both here and hereafter. But the mind of the Spirit is life and peace, both now and forever. When you are following the Spirit, whether it's in a decision that you're making, and that decision, you should practice that kind of following and making those decisions on your way home from work or the grocery store, anywhere you're going. You should practice locating and making that kind of decision by locating direction in your spirit on what you should wear tomorrow. You can get in the habit of that. Learn to be dependent on Him. Not because you don't know how to dress yourself, but as a matter of practicing on something that's not life and death. It's not, you know, it, 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 it's not going to hurt anything if you wear blue instead of red most of the time. But if you will listen to Him, and follow him in something like that. It's amazing what he will do. I, I, just out of my own experience, I have seen several things happen. Number one, I have seen, um, I've seen my wardrobe expand. Glory to God, you know. Because if the Holy Ghost decides he doesn't have enough to work with, he'll supply. Praise the Lord. Uh, but I have also seen it expand in thinking of, oh, I never thought about that and that together. Praise the Lord. I appreciate that. Uh, all sorts of things, miraculous sort of things can start happening with just your wardrobe. Praise the Lord. You don't, you, you just, it's a wonderful thing to trust him with that. I've also seen though, where to have something on him, you are, you know, you're affected by what you wear. Your, your attitude and your idea of yourself, what you think of yourself. I remember when I was a child, my mother would not she simply would not go somewhere nice if I had on a pair of pants when I was a little girl. She said, you absolutely act awful if you're in a pair of pants, but if I put you in a dress, you'll act nice. And so I was not allowed to wear pants anywhere outside of the house until, I don't know, maybe I was eight, seven, eight, ten years old because I would, get, I would act rambunctious and wild if I had on slacks. And so you, you are the way you dress. You can't help that. Now, some of you, let me just throw this out there. You may not want to hear this, but I'll say it anyway. Little things like that in your wardrobe. Um, you might want to ask him what you should wear to church. What brings greater honor to someone who is already honored? Um, let's say, for example... What I mean, and I'm not talking about appreciation, but I'm talking about actual honor bestowed. Let's say we had a senator here. What is a greater? What brings greater honor to that person? You coming up and saying, "Really glad to meet you. Respect you for what you do." Or the president of the United States that comes and says, 
really glad to meet you. I really respect what you do. Which one would you put in your diary? Okay. So when you come into the service, what brings the most honor to him who is already the most honored? You want to place the greatest value on yourself that you possibly can. First of all, because Jesus has honored you enough that he made you his righteousness. And you want to do everything you can to step into the fullness of what that means. If you come into church in your shorts and t-shirt, what brings the most honor to the Lord? Do you see? See where I'm going with that? So, well, the Lord knows my heart. Yeah, but he's watching what you do. You cannot, your spirit, soul, and body... Yes, you are three parts, but you know what? You're hooked together. And if your spirit is in charge, I guarantee you, it won't tell you to wear your shorts and t-shirts to church. And the Lord will help you. If you will practice listening to him on things like that, he will help you be prepared. You'll find yourself dressed and ready. It, it may not mean anything to anybody else, but it changes you. You're, you're, there's something, it may, it may make a difference in your own mindset of, of your own view of yourself. You know that makes a big difference when there's a crisis and you have to pray in authority. You don't have time to, to work some authority up. It needs to be there. You need to step into a situation in the authority that God has given you. And if you're always dressing like you don't have any, then you have an image of yourself that way. And you, you cannot change that. It will do that to you. It will do that. That's why you find all through the scripture that the, the Bible describes exactly what God wanted the priesthood to wear. Why? Highest authority. And they were the ones that came before God. So they had the finest in order to come before him who is the finest. So you see how even just a little thing like going in the Holy Ghost can correct you, change your attitude. All sorts of things can happen if you just learn to. Don't just ask him for his opinion. He won't appreciate it. But you be willing to hear him and obey what he tells you to do. You be willing to listen to him and do what he tells you to do. And my goodness, you talk about the chastening of the Lord. There'll be all sorts of things that he may correct that you never expected. But what happens when he's doing, when he's doing that? What is happening with that correction? He's lifting you up. He's qualifying you. Qualify, qualify, qualify. So that you can be trusted and allowed to operate in higher spiritual places of authority. There are things that... Uh, you can't qualify to deal with spiritually in financial realm or anywhere else because you can't be trusted or because you don't know how. Say, so these things really matter. Yeah, they really matter. Praise the Lord. Then one other thing about like trusting Him about your clothes, it may make a big difference to what somebody else sees. It may matter what other people view. It may make a difference on whether or not... You may just have an encouraging word for someone. But how you're dressed may matter whether or not they hear it. All of a sudden, these little things, these little things can take on such entirely new and different weights and value. We practice these things and they make a huge difference in your prayer life. It's amazing. You say, well... Does it really matter? Well, I don't know. Do you want an old dried up prayer life or do you, want to, do you want to commune with the Holy Spirit? Do you want to talk to Him in the heavenly places? And yeah, these things really do matter. I don't know if you know this or not, but the Holy Spirit and the kingdom of heaven is not based on American culture. American culture has missed it a long way. 
and have allowed, in many cases, the, when the Bible says, don't let your freedom be an occasion to sin. And so often we've allowed our freedom to give us an occasion to sin. Hallelujah. Well, bless the Lord. Let's see what else we need to say. We're just endeavoring here to follow what the Lord wants us to say today. While I'm stepping on your toes, you want me to step? That was one foot. You want me to step on the other? Who wants to stick their toes out there the most? Looks like I'm going to have to preach to this section. They're probably the ones that don't need it because they're the ones that want it. This here, and we're reading about how that uh, in verse 7, the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts and purposes is hostile to God. For it does not submit itself to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. So then those who are living the life of the flesh, they cater to the appetites and impulses of their carnal nature, cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to Him. But you are not living the life of the flesh, you're living the life of the Spirit if the Holy Spirit of God dwells within you and directs and controls you. But if anyone does not possess the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. Praise the Lord. Now this part that says um, those who are living the life of the flesh cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to him. Again, like I was saying before, this satisfying and gratifying the Spirit. Remember 1 John 2.20 says that you have an unction from the Holy One. That unction, that's that witness. The, uh, there in Acts it says the Spirit of God bears witness. Actually, I think it's here in Romans. The Spirit of God bears witness with us, with our spirit. In fact, it's verse 16. The Spirit himself, Amplified says, testifies. King James says, bears witness with our own spirit. That we are the sons of God. That he bears witness of the word. He bears testimony of the word all the time. And so that satisfying him, that pleasing him, that knowing that you've hit it right on, that witness comes from the inside. But he tells us here in verse 8 that the, those that are following after the impulse of the flesh, that doesn't please God. So when you're praying along... You can tell, you start to tell it's in the flesh simply by the, the response that you're getting. You know, when there are times that I have just been, just prayed and been in such fervent prayer and then just kind of come to myself and think, you know, I'm here by myself. <laughs> and there is nothing worse than prayer by yourself. You just pray to you. And I think that's where that phrase came from. That I don't feel like my prayers got any higher than my nose. Well, they may not have if, if you left the Holy Spirit out. But that's when you step back. And you say, all right. And sometimes you, all you have to do is just stop for a moment. And you, it doesn't even take any lightning bolt revelation to see that the way and the line of prayer that you're going is not, the pray, is not praying by love. But any prayer that is in the, that's in the flesh... You're going to run up against that. You're going to find that that's, that's the response that you'll get. I think I told you the other night about praying the other day. And, and how I had, my mind had to switch. You can even be praying scripture. But if you're not praying it from the right position that the Bible tells you. this, The Spirit testifies of the Word. He is not going to come together, take hold together with you there in verse 26. The Spirit comes to our weak, bear us up in our weakness. We don't know what prayer to offer as worthily as we ought, but the Spirit Himself goes to meet our supplication and pleads on our behalf with groanings too deep for utterance. The uh, Greek word is paraclete, the Holy Spirit, one called alongside to help. He takes hold with you in prayer, but He always takes hold with you from the Word of God. And if you have been taught and you know that you are the righteousness of God in Christ and you try to get something done under, praying from underneath the problem where it's more on top of you than you're on top of it, He won't take hold with you because He won't go there. Now what He will tell you if you'll listen to Him is He'll start telling you, come up, come up. You're seated with Him. You have authority. 
My grace is sufficient. You've been given the name. And it changes your whole demeanor and your whole position. You, oh, that's right. Then you can sense he takes hold together with you. And you begin to pray about that in a totally different position. You can sense the release of faith and the release of power. And you know things are changing. That's what, that's what Paul was doing. Get this thing off of me. Get, I mean, he was under tremendous pressure. That thorn in the flesh, the Bible tells us what it was. Number one, it was a messenger sent of Satan. But we read through the scripture, we can tell that that devil would go and inspire people against Paul everywhere he went. He had a great revival going in one city. And all of a sudden, there were some Jews that came from another city that stirred up and turned the whole revival around to where they wanted to kill Paul. That would aggravate you after a while. And so he's putting that before the Lord. It was a big thing. What? But though no, he was under the problem. Lord, get this off me. Lord, get this off me. Lord, do something about this. Lord, I'm under pressure here. Can't you see? Don't you know? And finally, after three times of that, the Lord said, Hey, my grace is sufficient for you. What is God's grace? His ability and His power at work in you. Not to tolerate that thing, but to change it and put a stop to it. And he did. So you can see how that completely changes your whole thinking. This is why we must be hungry for the Word. This is why we have to have the Word going in our lives all the time. Because this is what gives us an, the effectiveness to live and the effectiveness to pray. When, with the Word, I'll step on your toes in a minute. You want to, the, the, the Word of God and the Spirit of God, we've already established that those two go together. And the Spirit of God is the voice of the Word. Without the Spirit, you can read the Word and you get some other voice going in it. And it'll, it'll talk condemnation and, and death to you. But if, you're, if you are, are endeavoring to hear from Him when you go to the Word, then the Spirit will speak to you through that Word. But you learn to hear his voice on the inside by learning to hear it from the scripture. That's why the more you have the word going in your life. And I'm talking about everything from sitting down and just reading your Bible. Are you reading your chapter every day, by the way? You ought to be reading that with us every day. That's the most, this is the most wonderful time I've ever had reading my Bible through is doing this with you. So if you haven't been doing it, then just pick up with us and get right back on track. Uh, we're reading Monday through Friday, and I think we put those chapters in the bulletin each week, so Sunday you can figure out what that is and catch up with us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, anyway, but if you're reading your Bible, and then getting under the presence of the Word, and having tapes going and so forth, where it's, it's around you, that's number one. Number two, though, is to be listening for what the Word says to you. You know that old, that old the saying that we say sometimes we hold up our Bible? This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. I can do everything it says I can do. I can have everything it says I can have. But there's one more line to add to that. If I will do what it tells me to do. You can't make the Bible do for you what you want it to until you first do what it tells you to do. It just works that way. And so you put your life in submission to the Word. You put it to where you're always listening for it to change you. You're not listening for it to change somebody else. You're not just listening for what you can get from it. But you're listening for how it changes you. Everything you hear, you hear it with a voice. The Bible says, judge yourself and you won't be judged. So with everything you hear from the Word, you're judging yourself. How does that change what I think? How does that change what I say? How does that change me on the inside? How does that change what I do? How does that change the words of my mouth? Even when you hear that the Word says that you're healed, then that should change what you say. You order your mouth to say what it says. If it says I'm healed, then I change to believe that. And you're always in that mode of submitting to the Word. Then what happens? It talks to you. That Word will talk to you not only when you're reading it, not only when you're hearing it, but as you walk and talk. In the Old Testament, and I believe it's in Isaiah, said that the Word will speak to you. Or is that Proverbs, George? When the, 
Proverbs. The word will speak to you when you lie down and when you rise up. It'll speak to you in the night. The word will begin to speak to you in dreams. The word will speak to you in visions. The word will speak to you in the unction of the Holy Spirit. Then you will also hear the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord is not what you hear out here. You don't hear it with these ears except on maybe some rare occasion he might speak to you that way. But I've only heard his voice with my ears one time and I was eight years old. But I have heard the voice of the Lord and when you hear it, you hear it on the inside. It's a voice that you hear on the inside and it, it doesn't necessarily sound like what you hear on the outside but it comes to you in words. There's the witness of the Spirit that moves you, and that witness comes to you. You have a knowing of what He wants. You have a sense. He bears witness. You have an unction. You have a leading. But the voice of the Lord is when He speaks to you, and there are words to what He says. You have a definite, there's clarity. There are times when there's a, a leading but then there's the voice. And that voice comes more clearly when you have submitted. You will hear that voice speak to you specifically about things like that financial investment that, uh, that the Lord uh, was telling you about. And the voice, when you have submitted to the voice of the word that you hear, then it will begin to speak to you individually. It will give you the course for your life give you the direction in living, but it will also begin to come to you in ways that you did not expect in your prayer time. You'll find the word coming up and you, it will correct your praying. The Holy Spirit will constantly monitor you to where you, know, you should love correction because as the Lord's correcting you, what's he doing? He's putting you on that narrow path. And the more narrow that path is, the more powerful it is. You know, light, when it is narrowed down, becomes a laser. And that narrow path, then, is what puts you on a path of precision and expertise and a higher level. And you qualify, then, for positions of authority in your life. And as you qualify for more authority in your own life, you will qualify for authority as it affects other people. And the Lord begins to allow you to move in and out, in the spirit even, in other people's lives because he can trust you. But if you don't follow the laws of the spirit, he won't trust you. If you talk ugly about people, he won't trust you. How can he trust you over in, in the realm of the, in the spiritual things where you begin to affect people's lives when he can't trust what your tongue is going to say? You're not developed in it. If you can't harness your mouth and not say ugly things about people, then, then there's no power that can come out of it. it. Doesn't matter what your words are, there won't be power in the words. It's not just what you say, it's what's in what you say. You know, you can tell somebody you love them and then give them, give them the creeps. You know, make them feel bad. Why? Because what you really mean, that's not what you mean, that's not what's in it. It's like asking your, your, your wife, you know, um, is something the matter, honey? No. Well, was no really the answer? Even though the words were no, was it really no? No, there was something else in that word. Have you ever, t have you ever said, I am healed in such a way that people can know that you're sick? <laughs> I just believe I'm healed. I just buy stripes. I'm just healed right here. It's right here. This is where I'm healed. And we caught ourselves doing that because our children were little. I remember one time saying something about, I, I, actually at the time that I said it, I would just said, I, 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 bless God, I'm the healed of the Lord. And Aubrey said, what's wrong? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So it's what you put in it that makes the difference. You might want to write that one down. I think that's pretty good. Okay, it's getting late here, but I'm going to tell you this may be the single biggest key. Maybe. I mean, I, you know, I may know a few things, but I wouldn't call myself an expert. 
haven't lived long enough to be an expert. But as far as I can tell, this may be one of the most important keys to your spiritual life. What is the number one problem of the flesh? The number one thing that the flesh pro produces. Somebody tell me. Yeah, well, that would go right along with it. Yeah. Pride. Pride. All selfishness comes from a sense of pride. You know, remember Brother Moore preached to us about pride here a few years ago? And boy, he really uncovered all sorts of things that were prideful. And he told us then, he said, the Lord told him, he said, that is something that's in your flesh that you must deal with on a daily basis and always will. Because whatever element of pride you put down, there's a higher degree of it waiting on you. And about the time you think you've got it all put down, well, that's pride that you think you got it put down. You'll be real proud of your humility. And it's kind of, it seems like me. Do you ever play shoots and ladders when you were a kid? That's that, am I dating myself? But anyway, shoots and ladders, you know, it's like numbers from 1 to 100 and they're little squares. And you go along, you roll a dice and you get to move that many. And if you get on a ladder, then you get to go up to the next row. But you go along and if you land on a chute, then it takes you way back down. And so you get a chute and the first one to 100 wins. Well, <laughs> humility and pride, you know, you can be going along and you may be making all sorts of progress. But where humility and pride are concerned, uh, you can really learn to put this down and put that down. But as soon as you hit pride again... It's not like you just deal with that. It seems like it brings you all the way back down again. It's like you start over. Because once you let it in your life, it's in your life, even if it's for a moment. So the, the idea, of course, is to deal with it right away. But this is one that we are all challenged with. I think it's more difficult for Americans than maybe any other people on the planet. And, and perhaps, I don't know, it could be that out of all Americans that Texans may have the most challenge. I don't know. <laughs> But I want to show you one of the, the ways that pride, I think, the, the highest level of the manifestation of pride. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2. And if you will learn to recognize this and then let the Holy Spirit help you with it, then it will make a huge change in your life. Second Peter 2, Let's see where I want to start. That all of this chapter is talking about, we just read this in our reading here a few days ago. It's talking about immorality, it's talking about judgment on immorality, and talking about the judgment of the flood, judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah, um, talking about Lot. Verse 8, that just man living among them, he tortured his righteous soul every day with what he saw and heard of their unlawful and wicked deeds. So that right there ought to tell you, you torture your soul. You put your spirit in a, in a hard place when you spend time putting the world before your eyes. I like what Sister Copeland said, don't watch something that you don't intend to do. You watch it long enough, you'll do it, or it'll get down on the inside of you, and it'll come out your mouth, and you'll find yourself either praying or living out or both the things that you see and hear. Okay. Verse 9. Now, all these things are true. Then be sure the Lord knows how to rescue the godly out of temptations and trials, how to keep the ungodly under chastisement until the day of judgment and doom. So if you were to read through this whole chapter, you find out that he is building quite a case against the world, against the ungodly, and he is really setting it up to even talk about the coming judgment. The, the coming judgment of the return, the coming tribulation, the coming judgment of devils, the judgment of the Antichrist, so forth. Verse 10. And particularly, he singles this out, those who walk after the flesh and indulge in the lust of polluting passion. You know, not all passion is bad, but there are passions that pollute the spirit. And scorn 
and despise authority. The flesh, you can put it like an equation. The flesh equals pride equals the despising of authority. The spirit equals humility, which equals submission. Submission is an element of the spirit that I dare say, because it's love, submission is love. Love is submission. Love is submissive. And the whole of the kingdom of God operates based on it. I'll show you what I mean. Did not Jesus say, I, the Son of God, spotless, without sin, holy and righteous, who was before the Lamb slain from before the foundation of the world, by whom all the worlds were created. Do not, I do not say anything but what I heard my father say. I don't do anything but what I see my father do. And then he went on to say, and the father does whatever I ask him to. It's totally submitted one to the other. Jesus said, my judgment is not my own. It's from the Father. But then he went on to say, and the Father has given all judgment to me. So you see, submission doesn't mean you have your, that all authority is taken from you. It means that you take your authority and you submit it. What an honor. What power. When your authority comes up underneath the authority of someone else, first of all, God, but submission comes under that authority, what happens? It's compounded. It's increased. That doesn't mean you just do it, you know, all upset and mad, and you do it anyway. No, when you yield. The things of the Spirit are so real. They're so practical. And there are things that are practical, that are spiritual, that you don't recognize them to be spiritual, so you don't mess with them. You think more highly of yourself. We all do this. Then we ought. Place greater importance on what I think and what seems right to me. You're not operating out of your spirit, because that goes against the word. You're operating out of a, the impulse of your soul. Wives, submit to your husbands. That's so practical. That's so easy. That's a practical way to develop in submission. Wives don't want to. They, they, they flare up and rear back and get all aggravated and think that's old and archaic. But you know what? It works. When God said to do it, he had reason for it. And one of the reasons is that you, it, it, God made it so that we all have to submit. There's nobody that's not required to submit to another person, to many other people. And he put it that way so that there would be peace, so that there would be a chain of command. But see, in that chain of command, then he empowers so that when you do it because God said do it, then God is obligated to make things work out right. Either give the man the right Wisdom to know what to do or make it work out right even though he did the wrong thing. Hallelujah. Jesus said, if you don't receive the one I send, then you don't receive me. We have to take this, however seriously you take this sort of thing, is how seriously you'll be able to submit to the Lord in your life. You know, just check yourself. Did you bristle when I said something about what you wear to church? Did you bristle when I said something about, you know, different things about your clothes? If you did, then judge yourself on it. Check yourself out. 
Yeah, but I want to. But that's what I like. That's what makes me feel good. Well, do you want to? Do you want him to lead you? Do you want him to tell you where to invest your money? Do you want him to tell you how to walk out your healing? Do you want to tell him what to do with your rebellious children or what to do so your children won't be rebellious? Do you want the gifts of the Spirit and the flow of the Spirit? He does not owe it to you. He doesn't owe it to you. He does not owe you anything. <clears throat> but he has chosen to give you all things that pertain to life and godliness. But it will come to you as you submit to him. <coughs> Bible also says, how can you love God whom you can see if you cannot love the, your brother whom you cannot see? How do you think you'll be submissive to God if you can't submit to people? I've seen people that can't submit to a sales clerk. Fuss and gripe and fume. People that can't submit to a traffic light. People that won't submit to a traffic flow. Think, well, that's a little thing. No, it can be a life or death thing. Not only on the road, but if you practice your own way, you practice doing things your way, what you want, how you like it all the time, you cannot help but take that into your prayer closet. And you know what else you take with you? You take you wherever you go. And you will yield to what you think and not what he thinks. You will be well developed in the mind of the flesh instead of the mind of the spirit. You'll be developed in it. And the Bible says that the mind of the spirit is death and all the miseries that come from it. Death and sin. But we should be seeking ways to submit. How can I be more submitted about that? Well, I don't agree with it. Great! Wonderful opportunity! <laughs> Wonderful opportunity to prove God at His Word, to take your authority. You have authority. You have supreme. You have more authority over your life than God does because you can take it out of His hands at any time. And so if you, you take your authority and you by faith submit it to another man's, that is empowered not only by that person's authority and your authority, but you have the move of the Spirit on it. And the Bible even goes so far as to tell you to do that with people that are unjust and unfair. It doesn't tell you to do anything immoral, but just because they're being unkind to you, I've seen people walk away from an absolutely good job because they didn't like the way they were treated. The Bible says, hey, if you take things and you suffer unjustly, God says, thank you. Do it by faith. Do it believing. Why? Because then he's obligated to respond to you. And he may, his response may be promotion for you. It may not. It may be that that person winds up going to heaven instead of hell. What kind of reward is that? The reward may be that you find a place of authority in prayer that you never knew existed. Why? Because you know how to yield. You know how to serve. You know how to wait. You know how to put your flesh down. You know how to follow after the spirit and not the flesh. That's why, I, I, if you'll read the book, Andrew Murray's book on humility. Oh my, what a book. It hurts to read it. And you can't just read it once and you should read it very slowly. Not a hard book to read, but every word is loaded. But he talks about how you should allow things like getting your feelings hurt. He said, allow it to do its work. Allow it to root out pride in you. Allow it to show you where your pride is. And be humble. It doesn't take away from your authority in Him. It takes away from your authority in you. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's not a whole lot that can happen in your name. <laughs> it doesn't change a lot. Not for the good. All your name can do is what you can do. But when something needs to change that you can't do, you need the name of Jesus. But you can't just jump into that. The name of Jesus to, is to operate as He operates. 
He was the most humble of all. And then who was the, who's the Bible say was the meekest man on the earth before Jesus? Moses. Who, who had the greatest demonstration of power? Moses did. Hallelujah. The spirit is submitted. Jesus said he won't tell his own, his own word. He won't speak of his own authority. He'll only say what I say. I'm going to wrap it up with this. This is the prayer circle. And it should be our life circle. Your life should be your praying. Your praying should be your living. Your living should come out of your praying. The circle is this. It always begins with the Father. And the Father speaks to the Son. The Son speaks to the Spirit. And the Spirit speaks to you. You speak by the Spirit through the Son to the Father. And Jesus said in John 17, He said, I pray that they would know that I am in them and you are in me. I pray that they would be one even as we are one. It was all of these, he's in us and we're in him. And so this circle that happens, happens instantly. What the Father says, Jesus speaks, the Spirit speaks to you. When you speak to the Father by the Spirit, through the Son, back to him, it's instantly. Why? Because we're in him. He's in us. But the more you submit, the more you practice submission, the more you learn submission, the more you learn to flow, the more you whack away at that flesh. Crucify that puppy. Just get it up there on there, on that cross and nail her down. The more you do that, the less there is of you, the more there is of him. He's fully aware of you. But you must become fully aware of him. And you do that by yielding to him, yielding to his voice, yielding to his word, and hearing that word and hearing that voice wherever it is that he speaks it from the scripture, from the authority around you, some of them saved, some of them not saved. Hallelujah. From the preaching of the word, and from the witness and the voice of the Spirit inside your own spirit. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much that you've helped us tonight. You've helped us, Lord, in these three days. Help me. I trust, Lord, that it's been a help to others. If it has, Lord, it's because it's of you. It's because of you and because of your spirit. Because, Lord, you, you put words in my heart and because you helped me to say them and because you've given the people ears to hear ears of a disciple you've helped them Lord I pray that in these that these things Lord that uh, there they be seeds in their spirit and that they would take root and begin to grow up and enlighten them in their lives and begin to see things in the spirit hallelujah I have one other thing I want to say as the Lord just brought this to my mind. You can get insights from the Lord on all sorts of things. But as we have alluded to, is that there are degrees in God, just like we talked about the 9-volt battery versus the, the, the uh, wire power line. Big difference. Same principle. By definition, same power, but in a quite a different degree. The Spirit of God can give you insights on things, but He can only show you what you can see. He can only show you, the Bible says in Ephesians 3, remember He said, I pray for you that you may be strong enough to apprehend and to grasp with all the saints the height, the breadth, and the depth of His love of God. So you may have an insight, but by spiritual strength, that can be changed. That, that can grow and get more insight on it to where what you saw before almost seems wrong. 
And it's not wrong, it was just beginning. It's a beginner level. And we're, we're, we're all, most all of us always on varying levels of that in all different aspects of our life. That's why submission to authority can make such a difference. Sometimes you don't see things the same because they see something on a higher order and a higher level. Boy, I tell you, Pastor and I have had so many people just argue with us over things without considering that it could be that after 30-something years of ministry and after the things that we've learned and, and walked out in our own lives, that it just might be that we might see something a little higher order than, than they do. Not to say that we know it all, but... God thought something of us, of what, uh, not of us, but of what we know, in order to put us in this position. And certainly he would equip us, if not for our own sake, for yours. He's faithful to you. I don't get to be up here tonight for my sake, so that I have something to do, but for yours. Hallelujah. So you can see how serious this can be to buck authority. And not listen. Get mad. They didn't say it the way I wanted to hear it. I don't agree with that. I don't like that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for helping us. You're so good to us. You watch out for us. And I know in all of this, Lord, it's preparing us quickly for the days that we are in and the days that are to come. That we would be so in tune with you, Lord, that when the trumpet blows, we won't think it's the Santa Fe. We'll know it's you. We'll know it's you. We'll hear it. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Him. Praise Him. I just begin to pray softly in the Spirit. Just, just. When I say softly, I don't mean just by volume, but just gently. And look in. Just be in touch with him. Worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Your goodness. Your goodness, Lord, it amazes us. Your goodness, Lord, touches our lives, changes us, causes us, Lord, to be good like you're good. We're so grateful, Father. We are grateful people. We're grateful. We're grateful that you hear. Oh, we thank you, Father. Lift our lives to you, Father. We give our lives to you. Give my life to you, Lord. Abrashta. I give my living to you. I repent, Lord, for things that I said. They just weren't good enough. I repent, Lord, for comment that was it just wasn't good enough. It it was not deserving. Lord, of your presence or your ears, I repent. Forgive me, Lord, and cleanse me. Thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us and removes us from sin. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for helping me to to look to you and not myself. To look to your leading and not my own thoughts. Abrashta ki plasto. Aroje singe vezo si jata. Bless the Lord. Abrasho ki tali ki masunza. We're so grateful, Father. We're so grateful. Halashato ti zenzi vreshta tato ki zasi. If you will listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit, if you will turn your ear on purpose and determine 
to turn your ear away from the voice and the impulses of the flesh and cling to the word that says you are not a debtor to the flesh. You are not in debt to its impulses. And take your place of authority and cling to that word. Cling to the voice of that word. It will deliver you from any obstacle. It will deliver you from any oppression. It will deliver you from any stronghold in your life. No matter how long, no matter how old, no matter how rooted and embedded it may be. That word and the practice of that word will deliver you and remove you by the blood of Jesus and cleanse you and take you, snatch you out of the grip of darkness. It is most important in these days to be keenly alert and enlightened by the Holy Spirit and to walk in the light that you have. For darkness is growing darker than it ever has. And judgment is surely coming on darkness. Judgment is surely coming on the sons of disobedience. Judgment has always come on disobedience, but now it is coming in swifter measure. Judgment of darkness in these days is mercy so that others will run to the light. For there is a day and an hour coming when there it will be impossible to see the light. Run from it. Run. Turn your back. Hate the impulses and the carnality of the flesh. Do not allow it. Give it no place. And be assured that as you turn from it, grace is on hand. Grace is on hand. Where sin has abounded in your life, grace has already abounded more. The grace of God has already overcome. The grace of God has already overpowered. The grace of God has already undone the works of the devil. And it has no authority over you. You are not obligated to obey. If you will embrace that word, if you will on purpose tune your ear to me, by my grace I will cause you to hear by my grace, I will cause you to see. And by my grace, you will be delivered. It's by my grace and by my spirit that I will direct you in these days as, as I have never before. These are easy days to hear because I'm here. These are easy days to follow because I'm here. You're coming and approaching my very, the very manifestation of my presence in greater degree of glory than has ever been seen or known throughout the whole earth. And if you will just choose, if you will just listen, if you will just become a disciple of my voice, a disciple of the voice of my word and of my spirit. I will speak to you. I will lead you. I will direct you. I will guide you in every aspect of your life. I will enlighten you to things that you thought you knew much about. But I'll show you marvels. 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 But you must be sensitive to me. You must be quick to obey me. Not just where you want to, but where I want to. Be willing to yield to what I say, what I want, what I call for. Because what I desire 
is for your good. What I desire is for your benefit. And what I desire is for my benefit of having you. Be hungry, saith the Spirit of grace. Be hungry. But Lord, how can I be hungry? By faith. Just decide. Just choose. Choose it with all your heart. I choose you, Lord. And I will increase in you. I will show you. I will, I will bring that thirst and that hunger and the awareness of it in you. Hallelujah. I'm faithful, saith the Lord. Turn your back on all fear. Fear that you won't hear. Fear that you won't know. Fear that you'll fail. Fear that you'll make a mistake. Remember, my grace is sufficient for you. There's no condemnation that can come on those who are not walking after the flesh but after the Spirit. My mercy is toward them that fear me. My mercy will cover your mistakes. My mercy will make up the difference. I know that you are of human frailty, but I also know that you are born of my Spirit. I know that you are born of the seed of the living Word. I know that you are are created in the image and the likeness of the Son of God who was raised from the dead and exalted. I know you. And if you will look to know me, you will see who you are. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So brush the Hallelujah.
sweep over my spirit forever. I pray in fathomless billows of love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In say honestly to the Lord or to yourself no one loves me and I pray it's my heart it's the longing that I hold before the Lord for you to come up into that presence with him grow up in Him. And I'm so thankful that He's faithful. That it's my desire, but it's not my care. It's not my worry. Because He's faithful. And He who promised will do it. And even right now, don't be fearful or fretful about the things that we've said and worry that you didn't get it or you won't remember it. It's His job. Just follow it. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't He? He's good. He's good to us. You know what the Lord told us? He told us that this year is the year of fullness. He told us that 2005 is the year of overflow. He also told us that that overflow has begun. It's already started. And that we were to expect more from heaven than ever, more out of heaven than ever before. You know, I was thinking about that just the other day, expecting more out of heaven than ever before. Could that be Jesus' return? <laughs> what would be the ultimate out of heaven for you and I? Oh, it would be the return of Jesus. But until that time, there are other things that are coming out of heaven. Days of heaven on earth. Days of heaven on earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So let's just expect more out of heaven. And I believe, I believe these three days have been heaven on earth. I believe this is a visitation of the Lord. And I appreciate Pastor Terry for the study and the time, the preparation, the heart that she's given to this. And I just have an expectation. Amen. 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 <clears throat> now, here's, I have an assignment for you. In a moment, before we go, we're going to receive our offering. But I have an assignment for you. And uh, now, Pastor Terry's going to be doing this several times a year. I think. <laughs> I guess we are. Anyway. Has this been good? Go ahead and be seated. Be seated. Has this been good? I want you to tell somebody this week in church, go up to them, go up to them and say, 
if, if they weren't here, go up to them and say, you missed it. <laughs> you really missed it. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. And I, <laughs> and I believe, I believe though, I believe as we do this more and more, it's truly going to affect the life of our church. And then I believe that, that more and more people are going to catch the spirit of this. And that's what it is. It's catching the spirit of this. And the more that you expose yourself to spiritual things, the more it works in your life. It's the principle of total immersion. Total immersion. Being totally immersed in God. Oh, praise God. What a day that we're in. What a day. Father, we pray over this offering tonight, and I thank you, Lord, for your involvement, your communion, your union with us in our offerings, and in the harvest of these offerings. We are expecting, Lord, overflow harvest in our lives. And Father, I praise you that the overflow has begun. We're going to give in the spirit of the overflow, and we're going to receive in the spirit of the overflow. So, Father, tonight, as we give, we give as an honor and a glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Those of you that um, are giving cash tonight, there's an envelope there in the seat in front of you. If you're sitting on the front row and you'd like one, raise your hand. If you're writing a check, EMIC. And those of you that are watching us on BVOV tonight, wherever you are from the top of the world to the bottom all the way around, just click to online giving and your information will come before you. While you're giving, one thing I think just, if I could say, summarizes what Pastor Terry's been teaching about all week these last three days. And she started to even use the word interchangeably when she was talking about submitting, and that was yielding. Did you hear that several times? So we're going to sing a little bit of that. Put it in G, probably. Okay. And you all can help us sing it. It goes like this. Yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. Yield yourself to the unction of God. Just yield yourself mm -hmm, to the Holy Spirit. Let Inside. Come on, sing it again. Everybody say, yield yourself mm -hmm. to the Holy Spirit. We've got to yield yourself, yield ourselves to the unction of God. Yield yourself. Your God. Listen to this verse. It says, Yield yourself when He's talking to you. Yield yourself when He's directing you. Yield yourself when He's moving on. If you believe it, everybody stand. Come on, say yield yourself. To the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna yield ourselves more and more to the option. Every day and in every way, we're gonna yield ourselves. Yield ourselves. Yeah. To the Holy Spirit. Let him work. One more time. Yield, yield yourself. Come on, sing it like you're going to do it. To the Holy Yeah, yield yourself. To the action of God. Yes, we're going to yield. I'm going to yield my.
myself to the Holy yeah. Spirit. Give a shout to the Lord right now. Give him a victory shout. Who's got victory in here? Who's got victory in here? Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! Him work inside. I sure come get this woman. No. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, I'm just gutsy enough to do this. But I want to speak for you because I know you feel what I feel and how much we appreciate you. And that things have changed this week. And we're going to all sense it. The church is going to sense it. And it's wonderful that you've given yourself to God and to us to do this. So thank you. Amen. Amen. You got anything else you want to say? No? Good night, y'all. Thanks for coming. See you Sunday. Thank you for being part of our EMIC prayer seminar with Pastor Terry Pearsons. We trust you were blessed by the Spirit of God in these services. Now back to Spirit Building Music on BVOV Radio.